This is Faraday wax. I just made this, and this is brilliant. It's a red wax. It's fairly soft. Um, it can be snapped if you really want to, but uh, it has one amazing property, and that is, is a very, very good vacuum sealant. So, it was first described apparently by Michael Faraday in a book he made called Chemical Manipulations from the 1820s. It is made from beeswax, rosin, and Venetian red, which is a red iron oxide dye. And my god, is this stuff great! So, I found a uh, background is that for all of these vacuum shenanigans I'm doing, you really, really need some way of making seals. Now, the expensive way is to buy a ready made seal each time, which is uh, exactly what I've been doing up until now. This is a high voltage feed through. This is actually a six millimeter copper pipe that is electrically insulated through this ceramic insulator here and goes into this weldment here. Um, and while these seals are very, very good, they're also very pricey and scouting eBay for just the one you need is a hassle. There is commercial products for vacuum sealing. Uh, the most professional one is called Tor Seal and I think it's by Varian or Agilent. Tor Seal is a vacuum epoxy that can be machined um, and it's pretty good but it's also very very expensive. The slightly worse but still very good alternative is called Hysol 1C and it is completely impossible to find in Europe. So that's it. I had to find an, an alternative and uh, I read about this and this has been used up until recently. There are pictures of this on um, the first cyclotron from the 30s, uh, Lawrence foreign cyclotron, little baby cyclotron this big. Um, all of the vacuum ports and fittings are sealed with a red wax like this one. And um, I found this paper, Journal of Scientific Instruments, 1936. Uh, that's a review of laboratory cements and waxes. And this calls it Faraday's wax. And this review describes it as being by weight, one part beeswax, five parts colophony or pitch, and one part Venetian red. You melt the beeswax, in my case 10 grams, and then you add in slowly 50 grams of this, a little at a time, and then you add the Venetian red. And then you stir it, and then you cool it, and then you pour it into these long things, or pour it into cups, or just dip a brush into the hot melt and brush it on. I've I like this solder thing, so I've made these uh, thin I've made these thin slivers just by pouring out on on some baking paper. And I my hope is that I can just no not my hope I've done this. <laughs> you can heat the heart with a little torch, just a small like a creme brulee torch. And then you apply the wax until the hot surface, you just draw whatever shape you want. And then you do that on both your halves, and then you just heat them again and press them together. So uh, let me show you a seal I've been I've made with this. Here's a glass to metal seal. If it looks slightly cracked, it's because I've done everything in my power to see if I could crack it. The seal is here. Um, but it is a really, really strong seal. Um, so mechanically, it's pretty good. I've just about cracked it, but uh, it took a lot of work. Yeah, I've cracked it now, but it took a lot of effort. Uh, just just pulling on it straight like this is almost impossible to get rid of these seals. So if you give the seal large enough area to seal with, then it's mechanically very rigid. I made this seal. This is a KF25 flange with a hole in it. And I just sealed on a small piece of brass plate, making a ring of wax on this half and on this half and then just pressing them together after heating again. And um, I put this on my vacuum system, and it is pumped down so well that you would think the wax wasn't there. I got down to 10 to the minus 7th millibar, or tor, um, approximately, which is the best I have ever gotten. And that's as good as it gets within a reasonable time frame, unless you heat it or leave it overnight. So I'm very, very happy with that. There's no real reason to show you how to make this wax. It's literally just melting two waxes and a powder together and then pouring it. It's it's not that difficult and I don't really have the setup to show it, but uh, maybe I will. Um, if somebody asks for it, then maybe I will see if I can do that. Either way, 
I would like to show you how to use this wax, and uh, because what I really wanted to do is just mount a normal, this is not just a normal, slightly high quality BNC connector, in this flange with wax. This, there's no gasket on this, this is just metal. I think it seals well in here, but I'm not completely sure. Let's see. And I just want to seal that into this hole and see if I can get this to pump down and get a good vacuum. So uh, let me first show you how, how easy it is to detach again. That's the other good thing with these waxes. Getting rid of the seal again is tremendously easy. I'm going to grab some needle nose pliers. I'm going to put the part here. And I'm just going to torch it for a tiny bit. And then I should just be able to lift the little plate off. Like that. This wax can, comes off very easily with a little bit of acetone and a rag, um, which is perfect because when you seal stuff like this, you really should decrease it anyway. So, goal is to put this BNC connector, which is a slightly high quality, but oh, it's actually a Sooner brand. Uh, so this is a pretty good BNC connector. I think it'll seal in here, but I'm not completely certain. So we'll give that a bit, a bit of grease as well, I think. So um, let's grab a piece of our grease, our Faraday grease, and then let's um, grease up the two surfaces. Obviously, you can only do this to materials that stand being torched. Um, maybe you could preheat them in an oven. I don't know. I haven't tried. But generally, for vacuum, if it can't stand heat, then you don't really want to use it anyway. So if you seal glass to metal, make sure it's a borosilicate glass, like a piece of test tube glass or um, a specific borosilicate rod. Don't just use uh, thin window glass. Um, okay, let's try and seal these surfaces. We preheat. I have no idea how hot that got, but uh, we'll find out. Take care not to overheat. Uh, you don't want to burn the grease because then it'll contain soot, which is detrimental to the ceiling. And you might need to reheat occasionally to uh, to make it flow evenly. It's a little bit like solder, I'm going to say. Um, it's not a whole lot like solder, but uh, fill in here. So that's the first surface coated in this wax, and now let's do the second. It's tremendously handy that you can snap this wax. If you make a stick like this, you can. it's fairly bendy, but if you snap it quick, it'll just snap cleanly, so you can make sharp corners, so you can hit small, uh, small areas. Okay, let's, uh, let's preheat both parts now. That's hot. It's gotta be hot. Perfect. Perfect. And make sure it's hot. And then just let it cool while compressed. Okay, so the joint is cooled. It looks like this. It's flown nice all the way around. And uh, I have added a piece of central wire. I've decided I don't want this test to be um, polluted by the fact that there might be a leakage in between the dielectric and the pin. So I've soldered the wire in, just so I don't need to heat this part again. And then I'm also going to cover this uh, this white dielectric in, uh, in wax. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw in the nut and then I'm going to tighten the nut 
and then I'm going to reheat the wax. Of course, if you put mechanical strain on it, you can crack it and reheating it should allow it to uh, to be plastic again and reform in the joint and uh, form a very thin layer that should seal very well. Uh, and this is a place where one could do a classic vacuum faux pas because look at this. There's a tiny space in here along the thread and especially in this D cut out part. Now if we fit a nut on here then we're going to have a very very long leakage path out of that space. Which means that once we pump down our chamber, the pressure in that will take forever to diffuse out. This is called a virtual leak. It's a leak to an entrapped place in the system. And we need to deal with this or this will be a terrible experience. I'm going to file free grooves in this nut in the on three of the sides on the inside diameter so it doesn't seal uh, and that should be good enough. But this is one of those situations one has to watch out for because normally you would th wouldn't think twice about doing that. Also you don't want to seal vacuum stuff multiple places. Uh, you wouldn't want to wax the inside here afterwards for example. Um, that's also a thing. Then again you have an enclosed space and then you you have a small pocket of gas and the only thing that stops that is the um, is is the wax. I mean, you also have that on the outside, but that's it's designed to pull in and and seal. So uh, it's these things are things that need to be think. These things are things that are kind of strange in the vacuum world. So I'm just going to do that, and then I'll uh, put this on and uh, and heat the joint again. Almost ten to the minus seventh tor. That's not bad. The flange is mounted, sealed only by wax, as I've shown you. I put a Faraday cup in there, just on the end, just uh, for it to do something. It's not in use right now, it's just sitting through the weldment like this. Um, and yeah, it's holding pressure perfectly. The system has been going for a couple of hours. So yeah, I will say this looks, I think the best word is nominal. I'm happy with this. Um, yeah, so these, uh, these features, this wax, it just works, man.